everybody. Welcome to Book Chat. My name is Leslie and I am the Reading Machine Coordinator for Monterey County Free Libraries. This evening I'm going to be chatting with you um, about a book called Written on the Body by Jeanette Winterson. This book was published in 1992. It is 190 pages long, so pretty short. And um, it's a super phenomenal book. Um, I'm going to read the back summary for you so that you can kind of have an idea of what the book is about. Okay. With the same stylistic daring and emotional energy that have made her one of England's most celebrated young writers, Jeanette Winterson has written her most beguiling, beguilingly seductive novel to date. The narrator of Written on the Body has neither name nor gender. The beloved is a married woman. And as Winterson chronicles their consuming affair, she compels us to see love stripped of cliches and categories as a phenomenon as visceral as blood and organs, bone and tissue, and as strange as an undiscovered continent. Okay, so I think that's a, you know, that's a pretty good um, summary of what this book is about. Um, Jeanette Winterson books, they're really hard to review because they are almost dreamlike. Um, her writing is really beautiful and um, sometimes it feels like it's hard to grasp um, what she is talking about because it has this very like dreamlike quality, which I love. Um, so you, in order to really, I think, get a book of hers, you have to read it because it is, so much of it is in the way it is written. It's very, her books are very literary. Um, and I mean, I think that argument applies to pretty much every book. You have to read it, really read it to experience it. I just think that it applies to books like these um, more because of the way they are written. Um, the style of writing is as much a an important part of it as the story. So anyway, the book opens with the question, um, why is the measure of love loss? And that begins this um, novel or novella length meditation on love and desire and fidelity, because as I, as the back mentioned, the beloved in this case is married. And again, and also her name is Louise. Um, that's the object of the narrator's uh, devotion, um, Louise. Um, it's, it's a meditation on marriage and um, relationships and also of disease and death. Um, as later in the book, Luis is diagnosed with cancer. So the last parts of the book are named after parts of the body. There's like the skin, the special senses, which are like the eyes, the ears. Um, the skeleton, and that's where all the strong, very um, memento mori, like those vibes come in. And memento mori, by that I mean um, the knowledge that you are going to die, or that we're all going to die. It's a, it's a, it's a very good meditation on, on dying and um, the briefness of life. So, with all that in mind, I wanted to read a short passage. Um, underneath the the skeleton part and this is the part about the face the face there are 13 bones that form the skeleton of the face for completeness the frontal bone should be added of the visions that come to me waking and sleeping the most insistent is your face your face mirror smooth and mirror clear your face under the moon, silvered with cool reflection. Your face in its mystery, revealing me. I cut out your face, worded caught in the ice on the pond. Your face bigger than my body. Your mouth filled with water. I held you against my chest on that snowy day. The outline of you jagged into my jacket. When I put my lips to your frozen cheek, you burned me. The skin tore at the corner of my mouth, my mouth filled with blood. The closer I held you to me, the faster you melted away. I held you as death will hold you. Death that slowly pulls down the skin's heavy curtain to expose the bony cage behind. The skin loosens, yellows like limestone, like limestone worn by time, shows up the marbling of veins, 
The pale translucency hardens and grows cold, the bones themselves yellow into tusks. Your face gores me. I am run through. Into the holes I pack splinters of hope, but hope does not heal me. Should I pad my eyes with forgetfulness, eyes grown thin through looking, frontal bone, palatine bones, nasal bones, lacrimal bones, cheekbones, maxilla, vomer, inferior conche, mandible. Those are my shields. Those are my blankets. Those words don't remind me of your face. So yeah, that's just one small section of a pretty incredible book. Um, I remember reading this book years and years ago, over 20 years ago at this point, and being really enthralled by the fact that the narrator was genderless. It is never identified um, what gender the character is. I think that fits in really well with times that we're living in where gender has become a much more blurry and fluid um, construct that we're we definitely conceive of it differently say in during when this book was written which was 1992. That means to me this book is way ahead of its time and um and I love it so much for that. I love revisiting it 20 years later and being just like oh so good. So I totally recommend this book. Um, totally think you should read it if you really love beautiful writing. And um, I mean, don't expect it to to have uh, anything really like a clear beginning, middle and end because it's all very fluid, like everything with Jeanette Winterson is. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming to this book chat. Um, I hope you are staying safe and I will see you next time. Bye bye.